but showmanship is something, and I, I love a buildup. I love, I want steel to sharpen steel. I want the best of the best to clash against each other every single week. I want the best of the best to win every single week, and I want to face the absolute best of the best to win this belt, because if they take it from me, I want it to be fair and square. I want to face the best of the best. You know, the, you'll, you'll hear it from the fans, so you win, it's it's rigged. You it's lose, rigged, right. you threw it. It's, so I'm never going to throw a game, and I'm always going to play the competitive nature and right. wants to do that. I didn't think I would beat Bibiani. Right. I didn't think I would beat Steiner. And now here I am, and I'm playing uh, the best of all time, and I will say I don't think I'm going to beat him. First thing I'm going to do before anything is yes, shake sir. your hand. Oh, my pleasure. You and I, before this, before being Knowles, we got a, we got a, Knowles, Knowles, yes. we got a Knowles thing here, but the, you are by far, and I've told you this many times, you're one of the best people I know in this space. Oh, thank you. It is an honor to have you. It was an honor to have you the first time as the champion. It is an honor to have you once again as the champion. And now it's going to be an honor to face you for that championship. Well, I, I, it's a privilege to have the championship, and it'll be a privilege to fight you, my friend, because you, you know your stuff. Well, here's the here's the problem I face. Uh -huh. because I, well, I just watched seeing you what you did. Um, I face the problem that I'm coming off of a team victory over you. Yes. And I know how you get. Yeah. What you just said about the free for all, I'm sure you feel the same way about me. I to be honest, the second biggest sting that I've ever had in that <laughs> ring was was getting it down to 50-50 on the first Martin Scorsese movie and picking the wrong one. I so I do have a chance now to write that wrong. You do. And and you also and the flip side of that, you defeated my partner in the spectacular. I did. Um, no matter what, if I was to take that off of you, the fans are gonna say that I did it in my favor, but I will tell you what, we're gonna fight, we're gonna have a great time. I'm honored. Absolutely honored to play you. I'm honored to play you, and I want to talk to the fans because I see this nonsense about Christian floating around. And I'll tell you, I am a true champion. I would not play a man who would rig a game, and I would not play in a rigged game. I'd walk, and I'm not doing that. I look forward to playing this guy, and whoever wins this game is going to be your champion fair and square. So all that nonsense you're spouting online, stop it. This is going to be a fair fight. It's going to be one hell of a good fight. atmosphere here today. I am Mark Ellis. That is Ken Knapsack. And Ken, when you talk about competition, you talk about movie trivia, one person comes to mind, and that is Christian Harloff, the man who co-created this entire thing. He is the commissioner of the league, and he's going up against perhaps the best player the league has ever seen. It is amazing and fun to watch Dangerous Dan Merle move through the Schmodown, even in losses. He is entertaining and powerful and a force to be reckoned with, and he regained mm -hmm. that title. But I have said it time and time again, the commissioner, Christian Harloff, it can be easy to overlook him because he spent so much time up here. But this man started all this with you because of a passion for movies. It makes sense that he's here contending today. That's right, because books are dumb. And the funny thing about this matchup is that it wasn't really ever on the radar because Christian just had this little revenge tour he was going to yep. go on, like a rock band that got thrown into the most famous band in the world all of a sudden. His little revenge tour started out strong, and it only picked up steam, and it somehow has landed here, pitting him against Dan Merle. Wow, this is going to be quite a titanic and Titanic matchup. It's a Titanic. Titanic is a higher version of Titanic. I did not know that. I would have lost that <laughs> point to you. And you know, it's such a big match that I don't think just two people can call it. I think we need oh. somebody. I think we need a little bit of celebrity muscle here. Nobody better to do that than Mr. Mark Yodi Riley, everybody. Wow. We are graced. Multi-champion. Look at that. First ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yep, one of the legends of the game. That's right, making Matthew Kearns happy with his appearance here yes. today. We'll be calling the match Mark Riley. Honored to have this man next to us here That's today. right, he brought his Superman music, which is very yeah. exciting. Uh, much like a competitor would, Riley, you are never that far from the championship 
spotlight, and here you're calling a match between Dan Merle and Christian Harloff. What do you think the competitors are going through right now? Well, first of all, guys, it's an honor to be up here with two heavyweights in yeah. the league here of announcing and calling against two heavyweights here. Yeah. So who do I got? Are you asking me the question of who I have in this match or what do I think? Hashtag who you got. <laughs> Who do I got? It's going to be tough. But what you said, Ken Knapsack, yep. is Christian Harloff can never be overlooked. Right. This guy, he uh, he almost pitched a perfect game yep. against John Roca, one of my rivals, who was another heavyweight of this league. But yep. Dan Merle, I have fought him twice. Sadly, I have lost twice. Yeah. This guy is tough to beat. I don't know. I don't know. I might have to give the slight edge to Dan Merle. That's okay. why we bring you on here. Now, both competitors graduated from Tallahassee Clown College and Mark Riley, as oh, you get yeah, into it's a, good a one. I hear good things about that. Now, look, when you look at this from a tournament standpoint, we could have a belt changing hands. How hard is it once you get in the ring to protect that belt that you worked so hard to achieve in the first place? It's tough. You know, the league play is one beast. The championship is another. These lights can get to you. They got to me in my match with Dan Merle the first time. But I know that when you have played this game a lot, you can get all of that out of there. You can play just one question at a time. That's what this game is, one question at a time. And if Christian can do that, which I know he can, he should be okay and hang in there tough. One question at a time, five rounds for the championship matchup. And there has been some cordial words, but you can clearly see the fire and the passion between these two competitors. Here's a quick look. All right, well, here we are. Um, this is very interesting. It's very exciting. I am getting a chance to go up against Dangerous Dan Merle for the championship, who I am a huge fan of. I think he's one of the guys that helped me and Mark really build this thing. He is arguably the greatest that has ever played the game. And just like Rocky, I just wanted to go the distance. I'm back. I'm here to defend this belt for the second time, by the way. I can defend this belt anytime, anywhere. It doesn't matter if I just won it. doesn't matter if I won it two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago. I will be back to defend this. That's what I'm doing here today. I'm going to play my game. My game's the same if the belt's on the line, if the belt's not on the line. I play to win the game. That's what I'm here to do today. The thing with Dan is that he just goes in always cool, calm, and collected. And that's the... That's the game I want to play today. I play who I got to play. I don't care if it's Mance, I don't care if it's Wolf, I don't care if it's Riley or Roca or Riley again or Levine, doesn't matter. I go in to play the game, I win the game, I leave, and I wait for the fates to decide who I'm going to play next. I'm well aware that no matter what happens, I'm in a lose-lose situation here because if I lose and I decide I don't want to play anymore, it's like, oh, why, why'd you, I mean, you, you junked it, you didn't want to play, you say you haven't want to play for a while, so you, you, didn't, you didn't give it your heart. If I win, well, he must have certainly known all the questions. That's the only way he's going to beat Dan Merle. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm ready for it. I just, Like I said, this is more about me proving to myself that I can hang. There's lots of talk about records, and I tie this record, or I break this record. I'm not all about records and numbers. I'm, like, I'm not like some of those competitors out there that are just focused on their records. I'm focused on how I play the game. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't have anything left to prove. I've won this belt. You know what? I've lost this belt. I've won this belt back. I've defended this belt. I've done everything you can do in this game with this belt. Dan, it's going to be something today, man. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. You and I have faced once before in teams, but now it's it's one on one. It's a chance for the title, and I just want to see how I do stacked up against you. What better game could you want than the championship of the Schmodown playing the creator of the Schmodown? That's what this game is meant to be. It's meant to be a clash of the titans. It's meant to be a battle of the champions. That's what you're going to get here today. I mean, look, you see that right there. Christian Harlow, very classy, going up against yep. Dan Merle. It's almost like Christian doesn't want the belt so much as he just wants to measure himself up against the best yardstick this league has arguably ever seen <laughs> in Dan Merle. He's just curious how long he can last in the ring. Yeah, and Dan is up to the pressure. There's a lot of pressure being champ, Mark Riley. When you're out there defending the belt, not just lights on you, but sometimes it's per personal pressure. Dan knows what it's like to defend. He knows what it's like to lose, so he also knows what 
it's like to regain. There's a lot going into this with Dan. I think he's he's comfortable and confident and calm, and yeah. that is almost eerie calm. That's the dangerous thing about Dan Merle is that he is calm, and he said in his pregame interview that he just it doesn't matter who the competitor is. Mm -hmm. The game is the same. He's going to come. doesn't matter if it's Christian Harlow, Clark Wolf, myself, John Roca. He is going to play the game as the way he knows how to Mark play this Ellis. game. Yeah. yeah. Mark Ellis as oh, yeah. well. Do not forget Mark Ellis. Thank you Apologies, very much. Apologies, sir. It's fine as we go to the tail of the <laughs> tape here. You look at the strengths of each competitor. Christian Harlow, obviously, the guy knows a lot about Star Wars action adventure and doing a passable Jason Statham impression and dangerous Dan Merle. What doesn't this guy know? He's good on Oscars. He's good on Spielberg. He's good on drama, and he's good at everything in between. And making flannel work. <laughs> Not the first, not the last, but definitely a great champion of both the movie Trivia Showdown and Flannel. Speaking of champions, one of the best voices I've ever heard, like a strong songbird, the eagle, Ken Napsok. <laughs> well, all right. That sounds like a retired golfer's nickname, but we're going to go with it here. The all eagle. right. Call. We like it's it here. Time. It's, it's working. Time. What's the intro? Is it time to showdown movie trivia? Was that what you want me to say, Mark? Go ahead and let that golden throat rip. All right. It's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship Battle. Five rounds to a finish. Introducing first. Yeah. Uh. The Challenger. Don't get it twisted. This representing Schmodo and Collider. With a record of seven yeah. wins, three what defeats, and five KOs. He is the 2015 Open Schmodown winner and Listen. a former Movement Trivia Schmodown team champion of the world. Extra, I'll give it to you. Look how they show you. Get it on your own. Richardson. Oh, Here he is. The entrance by the commissioner doing yeah. the X for his uh, good nicely. friend, uh, his good personal ally, DMX. Yeah. Looking nice and calm there. Look at that. He's got the shades on. Block the lights. I like this. He looks ready. Absolute. And his opponent. Representing Screen Junkies. With a record of seven wins, one defeat, and four knockouts. He is the 2016 Schmodown Player of the Year. The two-time movie trivia showdown singles champion. The reigning, defending, showdown movie trivia champion of the world, Dangerous Dan Merle. And here comes Merle, a sign of respect from Harlock standing. Yep. Mer oh, Merle just oh, okay. Respect. Not respect. respect. Merle is all business here. Two be sunglassed gentlemen. Merle gives Harlock this watch. What an interesting turn of events. What, what is what this watch? I don't know. Time it I is. Gave, uh, I gave Christian my watch so he'd know his time's up. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna keep that watch. I <laughs> like that. Christian, not known to wear a timepiece, but maybe that'll change. Dan Merle with his belt. Christian with his customary bottle of sparklets water. And we are about <laughs> yeah. ready to get going. Looking for sponsors. Here, as we get into the rules for round one. Keep in mind, competitors, you need to pace yourself and hydrate because it is five rounds of movie trivia mayhem. The first round is what you're used to. Eight questions from eight different movie categories. Once you hear the question, please write down your answer on the whiteboard. When prompted, please show your answer to the cameras. At the same time, you verbalize it. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing in round one. Dan Merle, you are the champion. Are you ready for the championship match? I'm always ready for the championship match. He's ready to defend the belt, and Christian George Harloff of Schmoes No Fame, are you ready to take that belt? As E.T. says, ready. I would thought he was going to go with a Be Good reference. Yeah. Yeah, and I love it. that reference. Oh, ready. Ready. Let's get ready to Schmoda. Here we go. Five, I'm, I'm rounds. Five rounds to a finish. Round number one. The questions will be ministered by me and Mark Riley to preserve the integrity of the game. Mark Ellis is not been allowed to bring a laptop or look at any questions. In the Venn diagram of integrity and Mark Ellis, those two circles have never met. All right, gentlemen, uh, round one, eight questions. First 
Question category is comedies. Question is, Robert De Niro played Jack Walsh in what 1980s comedy flick? 1980s 1980s comedy. 1980s. Flick. De Niro. Comedy in the 80s, a bit different. <laughs> a bit different. <laughs> Get away with a little bit yeah, more. A little bit more. See, more on see, TC. Th see Thomas Howell, yeah. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, and one. Gentleman pens down. Dan Merle. 16 Candles? Incorrect. Ah, king of comedy. Uh, good <laughs> guess. Nope. Midnight Run. Midnight ah, Run. Ah, All right. Ruben missing the first one. Cancel out the, of the match. Yep. Cancel the out match. Out Get out of here. There's Pack it up. 70s. Midnight Run. Pack it up. Okay. Charles Grodin. Down. Come on. All right. All right, gentlemen. Your question two comes in the category of animated. In Beauty and the Beast, during the song Gaston, how many dozens of eggs did Gaston say he eats every day as a grown man? Mark, uh, have you ever seen a grown man eat an egg? I, <laughs> I've seen a grown man cry. I've seen grown men cry while eating eggs, and it is not a yeah. pretty sight. Doctors don't recommend it. Started eating eggs. I go with egg whites. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. Christian Harloff. Five dozen? That is correct. Wow. Nice. Dan Merle. I said three dozen. Ooh. Ooh. I believe he had three dozen as a child. As a child. As a child. As a child. Yeah. I had to sing that Christian song Harloff in my head up. over and over and again. Christian Harloff goes oh, up by one on the fun. champ, All but right. it's early. early. Question three, category is fantasy sci-fi in Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Two members of the League of Evil Exes have portrayed superheroes on the big screen. Name one of them. Ken, how many evil exes do you have? Um, and can that beat Riley's record? Uh, no, no, only one from me. Mark, one. Oh, yeah, I have at least 18. Oh, good, <laughs> That's good. a long move. That is a super Mark Riley three. versus the world is a Five, very long move. four, movie. three, two, and one. We are going to go with Dan Merle. Captain America himself, Chris Evans. That's right, one for Dan. Christian. Not showing off, just wanted to make sure. Chris Evans, Brendan Routh. That's All correct, right. that's, that's correct. Right. Wow. Maybe a little bit of showing off there. Just a little bit of showing the team. In, in case one was wrong, at least one was right. <laughs> All right, two to one. Uh, one with Harloff up by one. Your next question, gentlemen, is in comic book movies. The question, who played Dr. Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. the Scarecrow, in Christopher Nolan's Batman films? Those Great. are good films. Those I like good them. Films. Have I you like seen them, Ken? I have. have do any the of you guys ones. own hockey pads? Yes, <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, I actually don't. Yeah. Own. Oh, I, I own no hockey equipment. The hockey pads I do yeah. own, though, it's just a hockey mask. Five, four, three, two, and one. Please reveal Christian Harloff. Uh, Killian Murphy. That's correct. That's correct. Killian Murphy. That's correct. Three to, right. two, right. three to two. Three to two. Harloff still clinging to that narrow lead early in round one. All right, uh, next question, fifth in this round. Category is action adventure. Pew, pew. Ong Bak was the 2003 breakout movie for what martial artist? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Ong Bak was the 2003 breakout movie of for what martial artist? Martial artists are guys who like do like karate. Jiu-jitsu, very light on their feet. They're good yeah. at calisthenics. Yeah. I took uh, three weeks of karate oh, yeah. because there's a KFC in between my house and the rec center where they taught it. I That's had trouble good. putting on my socks this morning. Yeah. I got kicked out of my tumbling class at seven. Uh, five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. And Dan Merle. Donnie Yen? Incorrect. Correct. Nah, I'm wrong, too. Chung Young Fat. Uh, no, Tony Ja. Tony Ja. Tony Ja. Tony ja. Tony ja. Right. Tough one. Tough one. That's a championship a level question. Yeah. Well, we are still at three to two. Three to Harloff two. up one. Next question, gentlemen, is in the category, one of my favorites, horror thriller. <laughs> and the question is, which Wes Craven horror film was remade in 2006 and focuses on, focuses on a family of cannibals? Tell us a quick question. If yeah. in a pinch, which one of us would you eat? Oh, Mark Riley just looks so tasty. Mm. I do have a good mid-size right now. Yeah. A lot of meat there. Yeah, I feel like Mark Riley's the Morton steak, and Ken is somewhat of a 7-Eleven <laughs> big bite. That's true. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Christian Harlan have it. Did not have it. Dan Merle. The Hills have eyes. That's that correct, correct to tie the game. Oh, ties it up. That was a... Hey. He might, he might kick himself in the morning over that one, gentlemen. All right. Seventh question in the first round. Seventh question in the first round. Category is 90s movies. Question is, Gene Hackman plays Captain Frank Ramsey in what flick? 
actually an actor. Yeah. Hell of an actor. He, you know, true true fact, born 50 years of age. Really? <laughs> Came out Five, old. four, three, two, one. Christian Harloff. Crimson Tide. That's correct. That's correct. And Dan Merle. Crimson Tide. That's correct. All we still right. have a tie game. Right. Tie game. I did that entire question in my Gene Hackman accent. That's Nobody correct. picked up on it. All right, guys. Next question. In the category of dramas, who played FBI Special Agent Richard Dolores in 2016's Patriots Day? So the Indies are championship level questions. Champions. I looked these yeah. overs and uh, woo, it was yeah. tough. The writers cool. clearly know this is tough. a belt on the line here. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, and a one. Dangerous Dan Mark. Mark Wahlberg? Incorrect. Incorrect. Christian Harloff. the same thing. Mark Wahlberg. Looking for, looking for Kevin Bacon. Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Kevin right. Bacon. Well, this is a barn bore. We are tied up, and that is the last Obviously, question of the first round. Yeah. Right, sorry, sort of a I, uh, I feeling out process here in round one. Yeah. Four to four. Definitely worthy and very, very tough questions as we progress to round two, where fates can change and fantasies can come to life before your very eyes. Also known as the wheel round, here's how it works. Each competitor gets a spin at that their wheel. If you don't like the category you spun, you are allowed one mulligan, at which point you have to answer four questions from whatever category the wheel happens to land on. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can check to multiple choice, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, there is stealing in round two. Since we are tied, Dan Merle, the onus is on you. Would you prefer to spin that wheel or allow DMX to have the first shot? I'll give DMX the first shot. Uh, you don't oh, want to cross oh, DMX. No, you don't. All right. There it is. All right. Harloff Here we go. Spin. Harloff with a big spin. spin. There we Good go. Good spin. Good spin. There we go. I mean, I've seen better. Spins, well hydrated but... spin. Drama. Drama. Okay, Christian, what do you want to do? Heighten the drama or spin again? Say, save the drama for your mama, but to take it. He's going to oh, take, take it. Wow. Hey. All right. He's going to take it. Throw us off with the Schwarzenegger. It. Yeah. He's so good at that. He's, you know? You know what? Yeah. It's because he practices. Yeah. A lot. Day in and day out, his poor family. All right. Uh, Mark Riley's going to minister the questions for you, Christian Harlow. All right, Christian. We are in the category of dramas. Your first question. What actor plays Detective McPhee, who takes part in killing the man in the bathroom in the movie Witness? Is it Viggo Mortensen? Incorrect. Incorrect. Dan Merle for the steal. Um, five, four, Harrison three. Ford. Oh, no, that is incorrect. It's why we were looking for Danny Glover. Danny, Danny Glover. Glover. Danny Glover. Oh, the competitor's right. getting too old for this shit. We are still tied still at too, four. Too and Christian shit. Harloff, your second nice. question <laughs> is coming at you now. Who co-stars? with Robin Williams as Albert, his guide in the afterlight in the movie What Dreams May Come. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. A, Samuel L. Jackson. B, Denzel Washington. C, Jamie Foxx. D, Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding Jr. That's correct. That's correct. All right. All right. Got Hold a point. Goes right. up one. And we go to the third question in the category of drama. What actress played the childhood friend of Jason Patrick and Brad Pitt as an adult in the film Sleepers? Female or male? What actress? Actress. Actress. Mini Driver. That's, That's correct. correct. Wow. That's two points. He knew all the friends in that yeah. movie. He sure It was did. a female actress. All right, Christian Harloff, <laughs> your next question. In the Grand Budapest Hotel, many of the Lutz police militia have an image of what animal's head on their hats? Grand Budapest Hotel. I've only seen it once. Uh, Nah, he knows it. Give me multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice answers are A, owl, B, lion, C, wolf, D, bear. Owl. Incorrect. Incorrect. Dan Merle for the steal. Put that little quizzical look on his face. We are going to need an answer. Bear. That is incorrect. We are looking for wolf. Balls. Always wolf. go with wolf. It was a wolf the whole time in whole sheep's time. clothing. 
<clears throat> all right. Is that it? Now, that is all for Christian Harloff in round Shit two, but he does one. have the lead, seven to four. Please do not swear there are children watching. <laughs> Dan Merle, you are up. You deferred your first spin. It is now time for you to be in the spotlight. Give that baby a toss. All right. I've never said that Good before. Good spin from Dan. And spins in, and spins round. in. A lot of power with one-handed spin uh, That's there. right. He, that's he a just, spin that has been there yeah. before. Yeah, he Lots knows. Of practice. And the lefty, that too. I, don't, I didn't know he was a southpaw. Knows that wheel. Here it comes. Oh, here it is. oh no! Oh, 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 I've had that wow. happen to me. That can change the game, or he can overcome it it's and not, do all right. It's not huge because he fucking knows everything. Uh, <laughs> opponent's uh, choice, right. and we should remind the audience watching that it is up to the favorite or the champion in this sports. case to decide whether they want opponents and spinners' choice hey, on isn't there. There's no sports either. So though. Christian right. Dan Merle did decide gonna... to have opponents and spinners' choice on there. This is this is his own night. Choice. Perhaps digging into his back. What category would you like to make him answer questions from? The problem is, I know it's, it's a problem. Nah, there's Thriller in there. He knows Thriller. Damn it. Gonna go to uh, this, is, this is where you sports four, are. Four, dance. Give me three, sports. Sports, 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 sports movies. Sports movies. Sports All right. movies. All right. New All world right. order. Oop. All right. All right. Dangerous Dan Merle, Christian Harloff has selected sports for you. Going to get four questions in this round. You do have multiple choice. Question one. Who played enthusiastic linebacker Alan Bosley in Remember the Titans? Multiple choice. A, Donald Faison. B, Ryan Gosling. C, Ryan Hurst. D, Craig Kirkwood. Donald Faison. Incorrect. incorrect. Ryan Gosling. That's correct. That's correct for a steal. Whoa. I knew he was in the Big movie. Steal. That was a trick question. Big steal. That's a good one That's there. That's right. Four point lead mm. for Harlow. All right, Mr. Murrow, second question. What film follows the perfect game performance of an aging baseball star and what could be his final game of professional baseball? You repeat the question. Sure. What film follows the perfect game performance of an aging baseball star and what could be his final game in professional baseball? For love of the game. That is correct. That's correct. Two, Two points. points for Dan. Kevin Costner. Might have been the one that gets Merle woken no, up here. Yeah. Wade Costner. Wade was in another movie. Yeah. Kevin Costner. John C. Yeah. Riley, his catcher. All right. Question three. In Happy Gilmore, what fast food chain does Gilmore become a spokesperson for? Subway sandwich. Oh, is two right. big points. He ties it up. <laughs> that, that is why he is dangerous. <laughs> As it turns out, a better spokesperson than Jared after all these years. Oh. He went there, folks. Decorum, decorum. <laughs> Final question of the round, Dan. Against which team did Notre Dame's Daniel Rudy Rudiger get a sack against in the motion picture Rudy? Multiple choice. A, Army. B, Pitt. C, Miami. D, Georgia Tech. Army. Incorrect. <laughs> Georgia Tech. That's correct That's for a point. That is correct. Big steal. That's a big steal All because right. now Harloff retains the lead at nine to eight. Now we move on to round three, and it's going to be a little bit of a different circumstance. This is known as the betting round, and Christian in the lead is going to give that wheel one more spin. Whatever category it lands on, we'll have one question. Once you see the category, the competitors are going to be able to wager between zero and three points, depending on their confidence level. We will then ask the question, and then you will reveal how many points you wagered after the answer. Big spin for the wager round. There good spin, it goes. Good spin. All right. All right. Yeah. It's looking like it could be 90. Spinner's nice. choice. Oh, spinner's choice. So now Christian Harloff can choose whatever wow. category he wants. He is sports. Sports. He Ooh, went right he back. He went to sports. To sports. Wow, OK. Now we're going to ask the competitors to each write down how many points they'd like to wager again from zero to three, and then one of our trusty team members is going to confirm that. Yeah, we have uh, we have Dennis Zen on the side. Dennis there. One Zen, of the trustiest people in the office. I don't trust many people here, but yep. he's one of them. Perhaps the only trustworthy person in this office here. All right, the <laughs> the bets are down. Uh, your guys, uh, your guys' question is as follows. I'll read it. In 1993's Rookie of the Year. What team were the Chicago Cubs playing against in the film's big game, the final game of the regular season? Yeah. That is a tough question. I that will is. tell you that yeah, right that now. Is, uh, 
Not the easiest yep. one I've ever heard. No. I've, yep. I've heard a lot of them. I didn't know the question. Noted. Sure, sure. Mm. In 1993's Rookie of the Year, what team were the Chicago Cubs playing against in the film's big game, the final game of the regular season? All right. Competitors writing down their right. answers. Oh, and oh. now we go to uh, Dan Merle first. Dan Merle, how many points did you wager? I wagered. Two. He wagered two, two, two in points. the category of sports, and your answer was? Wrote the Oakland A's. No. Incorrect. Incorrect. Merle goes down to six. So as of right now, Harloff enjoys a three-point lead. Christian, how many points did you bet? Three. three. And your answer? Cardinals. You're going to be down three points. Uh, incorrect. correct answer was the New York Mets. The New York uh, Mets. And now we are tied going into round four. Yeah, we are we are lighting this up. Yep. That's right. Six, hey, six. if you don't know Rookie of the Year better, that's why you're in this position. <laughs> we move on to the speed round. This is where we can really get the hot tub frothing because we're going to ask the field five questions. As soon as the question is asked or a part of the question is asked, you feel confident you know the answer, you may buzz in once you buzz in you have exactly two seconds from the time i say your name to answer the question if you do not get it even if you had the correct answer outside of that two seconds you will lose a point all right gentlemen are you ready all right your first question in the speed round is what are simon Pegg and nick Frost's profession in hot fuzz dan merle cops that is correct for one point question two what 1989 comedy stars John Travolta, Kirstie Alley, and a baby with the voice? Look who's talking. That's correct. That's right. Question three in the speed round. Who voiced the title character in Fantastic Mr. Fox? Damerel. Bill Murray. And Incorrect. Incorrect. Loses a point, and it was George Clooney. So now Harloff right. up seven to six. Two speed round questions remain. All right, guys. Fourth question. Which movie was the feature film directorial debut of F. Gary Gray? Harloff. Italian job. That's incorrect. incorrect. Balls. It was not balls either. It was Friday, Friday. and oh. it's now six to six. <laughs> One speed round question remaining. All right, guys, listen, listen carefully. Final question. In Independence Day, who plays Captain Stephen Hiller's fighter pilot? Dan Merle. Harry Connick Jr. Uh, that's that's correct. No, I was counting. That was, that's correct. That was within two. That All was right. within two. Barely within two, Dan Merle gets the point and is now seven to six as we move on to the fifth round. What a hotly contested Being match contested. with nobody getting questions right here in the championship match. Round five. It was. It was. Don't worry. If you it was want two. To, I'm fine with it was two seconds. I'll. I'll. Ch I'll challenge it. I want to see if someone out there thought it was more than that. I'd like All to right, bring we in have a, a challenge judge. on the okay. field. After consulting with a panel of judges of various blood alcohol levels, we have decided <laughs> that we will ask another question. Ken Knapsack kept reading the question, thus it gave Merle a little bit too much insight into what the answer may have been. So we have a new speed round question that is going to be asked once again. This is the last question in round four. We are currently tied. All right, guys, fifth and final question. Who portrayed the role of Texas Ranger LaBeouf in the 2010 remake? Christian Harloff. Uh, Matt Damon. That's, That's correct. correct. All right, so big swing there with the Harloff challenge. It is now seven to six going into round five. This is a crazy championship match that has very little points being scored, but a whole lot of drama in store for us. Now we move on to the final round, final round barring here. overtime. And here's how it works. Each competitor is going to give us up here at the desk three numbers ranging from 1 to 20. Each one of those categories corresponds to a movie category up here. The first question is worth two points. The second question is worth three points. And your last question is worth five points. There is no stealing. There is no penalty for missing a question. Only your legacy in the movie trivia showdown. Christian Harloff, you are winning by one point. So what are the three numbers you would like to have? Seven, one, and 13. Seven, one, and 13. A good round of applause for those choices. numbers. <laughs> good numbers. Odd those numbers good all. Numbers. A lot of fans of the number one here. <laughs> all right, Dan, your numbers. Uh, 16, eight, and 15. Ooh, I thought he was going all even. <laughs> wow. wow, I love wow. that last Going all evens. Wow. Curveball there, right. coming back around All for 15. Right. Dan Merle, you. you are going to receive the first, the first question. This is the two-point question for Dan Merle to take the lead. 
All right, Dan, I'll be asking this question. Two-point question. You chose the number 16, which is fantasy sci-fi. Two-point question. John Carter takes place on Earth and... Mars. That's correct. Two points. <laughs> Two points for Dan Murrow. And, that's, uh, uh, that's a question, Basum. all right. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, what is Christian's first question? <laughs> All right, Christian, your first number was the number seven, and that corresponds to the category of Scorsese films. Scorsese? Scorsese. He is a director. Hey. Hurdle. Your two-point question. What was Henry Hill selling when he got arrested the first time as a kid in the movie Goodfellas? Cigarettes. That is correct, correct for wow. two points. Wow. Christian Harloff. Weird trivia right. question. I've arrested Henry Hill as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's cancel the match and hear that story. Uh, yeah, I did right. not know that. I'm fine with that. So yeah. now we move back to Dan Murrell. You will be answering your three-point question administered by Henry Hill's latest arrestee, Ken Knapsack. <laughs> All right. You're down by one. You're going to need the three-point. You chose, Dan, the number eight. That is Meryl Streep. Oh, boy. Ooh. Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep movies. Oh, All boy. right. Three-point question. Who directed Meryl in Ricky and the Flash? to go to five, four, three, two. Nora Ephron. Incorrect. Incorrect. Looking for Jonathan Demi. Jonathan <laughs> Demi. And now with Dan Merle trailing, he is going to be forced to answer his five-point question. If Dan Merle gets this right, we go back to Christian Harloff, who has two questions remaining. If Dan Merle misses this, then Christian Harloff, the commissioner, is also the new champion of the movie oh, trivia right, showdown. Luster. All right, Dan Merle, you chose number 15. That is the category of horror thriller. Oh, horror thriller. Five-point question. Put you in the lead and put this back into Christian's court. What is the name of the bartender in The Shining? Lloyd. Oof. That's correct. Five wow. points for Dan That is why he is so dangerous. He nailed that one. I didn't think he would. Very confident answer by Dan Merle. Maybe he's had a run in with ghost bartenders in one of his many travels. And now we go back to Christian Harloff, who really has a practice question here. It's worth three points. It's not really going to matter if you get it right either way, but it's going to make you feel good about yourself. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Christian Harloff, your next question, three points. You chose the number one, corresponds to the category of war films. Who directed The Great Escape? Oh, I, forgot. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. Is that your final? No, no, shot, the, no shot in the dark. Huh? No, it Incorrect. doesn't matter. Okay. The answer we were looking for is John Sturgis. Yeah. John oh. Sturgis. Yeah. John Sturgis, yeah. of course. And John Carter was from Mars. <laughs> Here we go with the five-point question. If Christian Harloff gets this, he is the new champion of the movie trivia Schmodown. If he misses it, Dan Merle keeps that shiny belt. <laughs> No pressure here, gentlemen. Right. All right, Christian Harloff, back to you for your five-point question. You chose the number 13. That corresponds to the category of Disney films. Oh, God. Ooh. This is for all the marbles. This is for the belt. Which veteran actor lent his talent to Zootopia as the voice of Mayor Lionheart? Four, three, Repeat the question. Well played. Which veteran actor lent his talents to Zootopia as the voice of Mayor Lionheart? J.K. Simmons. And your winner and new movie trivia showdown champion of the world. What a game. The what commissioner, game. Christian Harlow. What a game. Wow. A defensive struggle here, gentlemen, but a win nonetheless. Wow. And a new champion of the movie trivia showdown league, Christian Harloff, has the belt formerly belonging to dangerous Dan Murrow. Wow, that one, like you said it, Mark, that was, you know, 
handoffs, three yards, and dust type of game. Like I said, Woo! defensive struggle. And it came down to some strengths that both these players uh -huh. had and uh, some, some, some stuff in the middle of the rounds where they were back and forth, back and forth. It comes down to the end, maybe as it should for a championship match. Mark <laughs> Riley, how was he able to pull that last question out? Uh, well, the fact that he has a small daughter and watches Disney movies <laughs> might have helped the fact that he knew that answer. He played it well, though. He played it. He wanted to make sure he did the mm -hmm. great JTE rule, and he asked the question again so he could get his thoughts there. That's a sign of a true competitor, knows how to play the game, and now we have a new champion. Wow. We have a new champion, Ken and Mark, and now we go to both the new and the old champion here for the post-game interviews hosted by Emma Fife. Uh, Christian was very clear about the fact that this was a retirement match for him. Uh, what nobody knew except for me was that this was a double retirement match no. because Whoa. I made up my mind a long Whoa. time ago that uh, the next time I lost this belt, it'd be time to step away from the game. The commission doesn't know about this. Nobody knows about oh, this. Sucks. This is but I have decided that it is time to step away from the Schmodown for a while. I will be back, but there's a lot of new blood down there. There's a lot of people that want that belt. And I think now's the perfect time to give all of them a shot at it. So This is breaking wow. news. I don't even like, know. This is unbelievable. What Let's give it up for Dangerous Dan Merle. Boom. Unbelievable. Wow. I stepped down. We got a new champion. And then Dan Merle is joining in the retirement party. You Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of people see. down at Boca Vista. Everybody's going to want that belt, and me included. Wow. This is a whole new landscape here in the movie trivia showdown. For more insight on both the match and this incredible announcement afterwards, we now go to Emma Fight. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Emma Fife here with the commissioner and now the Movie Trivia Schmodown champion of the world, Christian Harloff. It's weird. It is. It's, uh, you're, doing, you're doing double uh, duty here. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's so many things go through your head. It's just like the competitor, I'll be honest, the first time in 2014 when we played, there wasn't all of this. Right. So all I wanted to do was I wanted to be I wanted to win it. I wanted to win the whole thing, and that was it, and bragging rights, and I wanted to play Mark Riley. Makuga did the Blue Fairy thing. It was over. It was done. But now with all this, it's like, you know, I always hear the comments or I hear the things, but then couple that with, hey, by the way, because I was just talking to Jay Washington. He's like, well, Vince did it too. So you have a Vince never retired Stone Cold Steve Austin. So when I'm sitting up there as, as and Dan's like, no, I'm not playing anymore, I'm like, Oh man, I wish I wouldn't have won. <laughs> you know, it's like, I want to see Dan play. I love watching Dan play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you bring up, when the Schmodown started back in 2014, there wasn't all of this pop and circumstance, and you didn't have all of these incredible new competitors coming in, as Dan Merle alluded to, as he announced his retirement, which was a shocker to all of us. How are you feeling about that? It, it uh, you know, he, he had told me, he had told me at the Spectacular last year that. He's like, well, it's before he played Ellis. He's like, I just want to let you know that. What do you think? Like, if, if I don't win tonight, that I step back. And I go, I don't ever want you to step back. He's like one of my favorite competitors to watch. Ellis said it at the table, and it's completely true. I just wanted to see how long I could go with him. I had no intention of winning this. I had no intention of doing that at all. And to hear that I'm stepping back, it's like, I can't wait. I told him, I, you'll see it. And when I, I hugged him, I go, I'm going to get you back. Mm -hmm. So he, he's, he'll, I'll get him to play again. So then what is what is the plan moving forward without Dan Merle and now with you with the belt? When when are we going to see this belt on the line next? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. The Dan Merle thing threw me off because I was I was planning on just saying that's it. That's the last match. And and giving Dan Merle the number one contender spot at the spectacular and letting him play against whoever, you know, was the the finalist and didn't win and then i don't know what to do anymore i was going to maybe put the thing up on the line and let the let them all battle it out at the ultimate showdown but i feel like i got to defend it against the winner i feel like that is definitely true and i also feel like your daughter might have had something to do with you answering that last question correctly um it it did and it also when i left this morning she was very aware she's five and a half she's very aware she's like Dada, will you be champion today? And, and I called her this morning and she's like, did you win the match? And I was like, I haven't played yet. And I was, and I'm like, and I feel like I'm, I'm not beating Dan, honey. So uh, don't get too excited. You got a better chance of getting a dog tomorrow. Um, but you know, she didn't get the dog, but at least she got this. That's true. Well, I'm sure she will be very happy to hear from you. You should probably go call her right away and share the good news. Congratulations, Christian. Thank you. You can count, call it what it is. It's, it's weird. It is. It's a, it is a little weird, but we still love you. And we will be right back with the person who is still a winner in our hearts, but lost the match today, Dangerous Dan Merle. 
And we are back with Dangerous Dan Merle, who surprisingly didn't pull out a victory today. Dan, it's, this is unusual for you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the real congratulations goes to Bibiani, because I think he pulled ahead <laughs> on all the stat sheets after that performance. That was... Uh, that was rough. That was the hardest game I've ever played, and obviously I think the worst game I've ever played. Yeah, it was a low-scoring game all around, but I think that it just is a reflection on how difficult the questions were, not the skill level of the competitors. Well, the questions were tough, but you know, the questions are always tough. I think that, uh, you know, I'm not sad to go out on a loss. I was prepared for that. I just wish I, I, wish I personally could have performed a little better uh, just to make it a better game. You know? Right, absolutely. I mean, considering that apparently in your head you knew from the start of this game that you were going to shock the world and tell us all that you were retiring. Would yeah. you like to elaborate on what prompted you to make this decision? Uh, I've been thinking about it a long time. The triple threat was a retirement match for me. Um, I, you know, I just looking at, but you know, for me, beating Roca was the last little bit of uh, unfinished business on my board. Right. I, I wanted to come back and do that and kind of and kind of dot the, the period on the end of that sentence. And uh, I decided that uh, the next time that I lost the belt, whenever it was, would be when I retired. And I think it's actually great timing because I see the league now. I see how it's shifting. I see all these new faces. The dynamics are shifting. And it seemed like perfect timing to really shake things up. And I love to watch all of these other guys play the game. And uh, I think the tournament this year is going to be great. I can't wait to see who goes through it, who advances. If, uh, if they're playing the commish. I don't know who they're going to be playing. I don't know who's going to play for the belt. I think it'd be fun to see somebody other than myself, Mr. Zroka and Riley, uh, hoisting that belt above their head. We just got our first one today. Who are some of the competitors that you think might have a chance? Uh, I mean, everyone's always talking about Bibiani. Everybody's always talking about Weenie. Uh, to me, though, I think it's always the people you don't expect. I mean, it's this this if any if this match proves anything, it's that the conventional wisdom and how you think people are going to do and what you expect out of a match. It is thrown out the window the second that first question is asked. I don't think anybody would have predicted that today's match would have gone the way that it did, but it did, and that's how I play every game. You don't know what every game has in store. As far as I'm concerned, every single one of them is a clean slate. Absolutely, and none of us know what's in store now for the future of the Schmodown because Christian Harloff, the commissioner who did defeat you today, was going to offer you that number one contender spot at the Schmodown Spectacular. Now, he says that he, he wants to go at it with you again. Would you reconsider? Would you come back to the Schmodown sometime to face off against Commissioner Christian Harloff. I mean, I love the Schmodown, and I, I am going to take a break, but I think if history tells anything, it's that uh, it's hard for fighters to walk away from the game. So I, I don't think it's out of the question to say that I might be back someday. I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know how it's going to be. My advice would be that if you are carrying that belt on your shoulder, uh, like Mr. Harloff is right now, maybe take a look over the other shoulder, because one day I might be there. Well, again, Dan Merle, you've been a wonderful competitor here in the Schmodown, multiple time Schmodown champion. We all just think the world of you. And I want to thank the Schmodown fans who, you know, I came over from Screen Junkies to do this. My first match was against Campia a, a year and a half ago, and they have been so nice and cool and gracious and and kind, except for some of the D-bags on uh, you know, Facebook, but that's all right, they're the, they're the minority. 98% of the Schmodown fans have been incredible. So I want to thank them for being supportive and watching this thing and coming over Screen Junkies and, and everything. It's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I love this game, I love playing this game. And we love having you here and we'll continue to support you in all that you do. Good luck with your uh, your t before, retirement. Before, before you do, before you do. I was able to, if you don't mind, I just sit for one second. So, like I did when there was, uh, you know, after the collision, we had our conversation, and I said it then, I say it now, you are the best that has ever played the game. You are my friend. You are someone that I can, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping build all of this. Without someone like you, this doesn't mean anything. It means shit, because it does, because being able, I felt like I was in uh, playing a video game against like they know Mike Tyson's punch out. Where how are you going to beat Mike Tyson? And I got lucky with the, some cheat code. So um, thank you. It doesn't mean I cheated, you assholes. Um, just open a can of worms, know, my friend. Know. But you know, but you know what I mean. It's like the fact that like it, it, I just wanted to thank you very much for helping uh, us do this. When I say that, I want to see you back. I understand. I understand. I want to step back, but I want to see you back. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe one day. We'll see. Dangerous Dan Merle, the greatest of all time. Thank you so much, Dan, for everything. And thank you, Emma. She's the best. <laughs> all right. Back to those guys.
I mean, look at it right there. It's it's not a it's not a contrived setup. It's not anything that even the commissioner knew about. Dangerous Dan Merle retiring. But before we get to that, Ken and Mark, yeah. Christian Harloff is the new champion, and I would say a worthy one of the movie trivia showdown. I've said it time again. I've said it up top. You cannot count him out. Mm -mm. He's got into this business for a reason. This is a kid who watched movies every day of his life growing up, and this has to be a proud moment. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him. It's it's uh, it's it's tough to run this thing and also lead this thing in the field, and he has the belt now regardless. That's right, Riley. You know, kind of compare how Christian was reacting in that interview the very first time he got to hold that singles title belt. What was it like for you the first time? Well, it's something. When, uh, when the weight hits your shoulder after you've gone through what you've gone through, whether it's a match like that or building your way up by win after win, it is something to take in and I could see it in his face, and he deserves it. My God, he is now on the Mount Rushmore of the Schmodown, perhaps. Absolutely, with a new champ, Mark, and, and, and with Mark Riley stepping aside a bit, Dan Merle stepping aside a bit. In Game of Thrones, there's something in the history called the Age of Heroes, and the current characters look back at that age as where all the heroes rose up and saved Westeros. We will look back to Dan Merle, Mark Riley, these guys as the Age of Heroes as a new generation reaches for these titles. Nobody read those books, Ken, but I will tell you this. Before we <laughs> say goodbye here. I mean, the Dan Murrow retirement, that doesn't seem like anything that was just thought up spot. spot no. of the, this is really something that he had plotted out and really wanted for a long time. Yeah, and I know the feeling because when you've played as long as he has, as I have, as a lot of us here in this room have, it can take a toll, but it's nice to see all the new faces now because there is blood in the water. That belt now is on the line. Christian Harloff is going to have to do a hell of a time to defend it, and these people, these competitors, they're going to come at it. This is a shock to me. The score was 14 to 13, like a 1960 AFL matchup. I don't even know if the <laughs> AFL was around that, but the movie trivia showdown is alive and well here. Christian Harloff is a new champion. For all the latest goings on in the league, make sure you guys check out the showdown rundown on iTunes and request to be a member of the movie trivia showdown Facebook page. We now turn it over to Joshua Hercules Makuga, Pittsburgh Superman, for the latest fantasy updates. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Josh McCougar here with your fantasy update. Post Christian Harloff, Dan Murrow, the champ has been defeated. He is retired. If you had him in your fantasy league, you should probably drop him. These are not keeper leagues. He may return at some point down the line, but I don't foresee it anytime soon. On the flip side, if you have Christian Harloff, keep him. He is huge trade bait right now, but let me tell you this. Because of all of his matches, and all of his matches are championship matches. That means he's going to play less often, which may be a good way to trade. Am I spoiling alert? Am I doing this? I said, Private Pile, you keep your mouth shut. Don't you break. Don't you break. Don't you damn break. If you break, I swear to God, I will rip your ear off and stick my finger into your skull. Play with your brain. Listen to me, and you listen good. You listen real good. This is a fantasy update, and if you treat your fantasy league like Cody Hall treats not breaking right now, you have a good chance of taking it down. When does the fantasy season end? The fantasy season ends at the Schmodown Spectacular. So start racking up points. You need point getters. You need point holders. You need to drop Dan Merle. You need to trade some people. You need to make some effing moves. Cody Hall doesn't care about anything. All he cares about is not breaking right now. For all your fantasy needs, Make sure to check out schmozno.com and talk to Frank Janish. There's also a Schmodown Rundown hosted by uh, Ken Napsock every Thursday live on Facebook Live. And there's also, is that, is, is that what it is? Inside Schmodown, I apologize. Inside Schmo, Inside Schmodown! Did you just break Private Cody? Inside Schmodown live every Thursday. And of course the Schmo blog, Schmodown blog guys, I believe they're over in England. They're doing a hell of a job writing about us making us look cool. I'm Josh McCuga. This is Private Hall. We'll see you next time on the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Hand my microphone to Comster. Go back on camera, I'm done. Hey. Whoa, what's up champ? <laughs> what's going on with you? Champ. Ah, uh, it's weird, I know. It's uh, weird. Very weird, especially you sitting next to you. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay, so, wonder what the hell I'm doing? I'm wondering what the hell you're doing. <laughs> well, we got the Fatal Five way coming up. Yeah. Singles tournament is about to. That's Five right. Way, very strange that you're not in it this year. I know. It feels a little weird. It's, but it's weird. like It's like uh, amputating a leg. I you know. feel the tingles but still. But you get a lot of color in your face like you're excited you're not competing. I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm taking a break. All right, so anyway, I'm putting all these contenders in here, right? Okay. 
a lot of different contenders who have competed over the course of a couple seasons. I wanted to give everybody a chance here to try to get into the tournament. Yeah. So the winner plays Roca in the first round. And um, yeah, so this is it. We're going to find out because Hector Navarro couldn't do it because of his schedule. Okay. But you are going to do me the honors. Okay. All right, you ready? Yeah, All I'm right, ready. So hold on, let me just sound, switch it up. It's a fair and scientific approach to this whole I thing. I figured how to do it this way. Yeah. Fair, simple, easy. Yeah, what okay. You got? Okay, I'm going to pick. Don't uh -oh. show it to the camera, the right? Winner. No, don't show it to the camera. Okay, I'm going to show it to you, though. Uh, Ooh, <laughs> that, that's interesting. Uh, that's that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. I think that person might have a chance. I think, I think so, too. All right, I think well, so too. that person is in. I know now who exactly is going to be in the Fatal Five on Tuesday. The winner will play Roca in the first round. Man, that's, um, I wish I could tell everybody right now who's going to be in it, but I'll save the surprise until Tuesday. But check it out. It's this Tuesday, and thank you guys for checking out the match today. I am honored. Thank you to Dan Merle. Uh, thank you to all you guys. Thank you to the angry commenters who I'm sure have commented, and uh, to the, the, the great commenters and all the fans on the Movie Trivia Showdown. Thank you guys so much. I kid. I, we love you. And this is, uh, this is something. It is something.